What to do YouTube, my name is Jinxed. This is a video I've been neglecting to make for a while because I wanted to make sure I had a private moment where I wouldn't be interrupted. I have that time now and I should stop shaking so my camera doesn't freak out. Actually, here, one sec. I'm gonna try and do this a little differently. Okay, because now I'm walking. Because um, I can't stop shaking, which that's gonna be explained as well as soon as I find a nice little setup. So. Let's turn some lights in here. Hey, let there be light. Okay. Because boy, do I have a list of things that I need to go through. More light. Actually, yeah, this is looking good over here. That was a good light level right here at this angle. Yeah. Yeah, much better. Okay, let's bring this over. Let's drop it right in there. Okay. Sorry for all that craziness. Oh, shit. Gonna zoom in or out in this mode. Well, that's fine. I don't really need to just zoom in. I just need you to hold still. Perfect. Perfect. Now I can move as much as I want and it's not gonna affect the video. But so, this is an update vlog to inform you all of my life and everything that's happened. And look at my hair. I like it right now, like this, even though it's all crazy. I think it looks good on me. Hey. Um. So to start off, uh, I don't even know. I'm just going to go back in time. So I'm going to hit the important parts of uh, what I feel is important that I really want to discuss uh, with this video. Um, so this all started a little over a month ago at this point. It started May 23rd to the 24th of this year. So a month and like a couple days ago. Um, I'm just going to tell the story from the top. I could tell that my wife was being distant that day. I want to bring this closer, actually. There we go. Um, there we go. <laughs> Hello. Uh, so I could tell that my wife was being kind of distant and weird acting late night of the 23rd into early morning of the 24th, which was our one year wedding anniversary. <laughs> Yay, one year being married. Woo, right? Uh, no. Um, but so, really guess I just got to tell it. Um, so I could tell something was off that night. Like I could just tell, like I knew like something like in my gut, like I knew something was off, something was wrong. She wasn't telling me something. I could just tell it. So I decided to drink that night to pass the time because I knew she was going to be out late from what she told me late. She told me she was going to over to a friend's house to take care of their baby that had heart problems. That way, like, it would win over, I guess, like, my caring, affectionate side for kids and be like, that's fine. Like, obviously, like, go help out your friends with that kid and do whatever you need. Uh, my, mindful, though, May 24th, our one-year anniversary of being married. I just want to keep that in mind, too, during the rest of this uh, story. Um, so she came home after 2 a.m., now the morning of the 24th. Early morning of the 24th, our one-year anniversary, she came home, and I very sarcastically, honestly, because once again, I just knew something was wrong, and she wasn't telling me something, and I was fucking furious about it, and I was also drinking, so I was a little bit tipsy. Uh, I told her a happy anniversary, yada, yada, yada. We went to sleep. I pretended to go to sleep just because I, I knew I just wouldn't be able to sleep. I was too bothered by something that I knew was wrong. And we've always had a very open and honest relationship. Not like we had an open relationship. No, we had a very, like, it was just me and her relationship. At least to my knowledge, who knows if she was a cheating bitch or not. Don't know, can't say. Not my problem anymore. Well, that kind of ruined the rest of the story. But uh, we'll get to that. Uh, so, I decided to go through her phone. See what the fuck was up. And I found messages to her and her friends saying, hey, I told John I was going to help you with your kid tonight. Uh, if he asks you, please lie to him and, like, agree that I'm going to help you guys out. Uh, so then I confronted her. I woke her up because at this point, like, now I'm I'm seeing red. Like, I'm losing it. Like, I'm losing my mind. And uh, I started yelling at her. I mean, honestly, it wasn't my proudest moment. definitely wasn't my best moment. It was probably... 
it's one of my lowest moments, and you'll hear why. Uh, so I lost it, and I just started yelling at her, and like, for, for a really long time, she really tried to lie hardcore, she was like, I don't know what you're saying, like, I, I was out, uh, with my friend at their place, like, helping him take care of the baby, and I was like, bitch, I went through your phone, I know you weren't there, I know you were at a bar, because you just wanted time away, even though it's now our one year anniversary, and you don't even want to spend, like, that early morning slash night with me. Uh, so I left. I didn't have shoes on. I had shorts on. It was freezing cold in the morning, just because that's how it is in Oklahoma. It's freezing cold in the morning, and it's fucking hot as shit in the afternoon. Uh, so I just left. I had no shoes on. Like I said, shorts, just ring short sleeve shirt. I just, I walked out of the apartment. I just left. I was like, I can't, I can't do this. Like, I can't fucking trust you anymore. Like, this is now the third time she would have left me. Honestly, going to go ahead and say that too. This is the third time, third, that she's left me and done this stupid lying bullshit. And I fucking know every time, as soon as it happens, every single time, I'm like, something's wrong. There's something wrong here. I'm very intuitive, apparently. Back to the story. Uh, so then, this is now my lowest moment. I one year anniversary she lies about going to a bar that early morning because like i said now it's like 2 a.m may 24th so like the our one year anniversary just started and she's out at a bar doing god knows what with god knows who like that's another thing that just infuriated me like it's all water under the bridge because like i'm i'm past it and i'm over it but I like to be very open about everything that happens in my life especially to my youtube and i like you all to know everything uh, so that's why I'm telling the story. If you want to know about my life, please feel free to continue to watch. If you don't want to know about my life, feel free to not watch. It's really just up to you. I should have put that in the beginning, but I will. Excuse me. Oh, excuse me. Um, so now I'm at my lowest point. I'm out of the apartment, and I'm literally just walking in the middle of the streets, like, hoping, like, that someone is just going to hit me and just in my life honestly because I didn't just want to be alive anymore at that point like I wanted to die I legitimately wanted to die um but now it's it's 3 30 in the morning now so it's already an hour and a half after last call for bars because last call is 2 a.m so all the drunk people are already home there's no one in the streets so I'm just walking in the middle of a dead street where there's nobody for like 15 minutes Maybe even 30. I have no idea. It felt like forever. Uh, eventually, though, I figure out that this isn't going anywhere. And now, like, enough time has passed. Like, I've calmed down some. And uh, I decide to go home to pack and get some shit and just go. Like, and just go. Like, figure out where I can go and just go and just walk. Because I just I didn't want to be around her anymore because at this point like it's our one year anniversary you lied in the first place to go out you continue to lie to try and save your ass even though i already knew the truth so obviously she just doesn't give a shit about me um so at that point went home had more of an argument she kept telling me to stop yelling i'm like no like we made a vow for better or for worse, like, no matter what's going on, like, for rich or for poor, like, it doesn't matter, like, we're gonna stick this out together and you can't even keep your vows, like, really. And here's the worst part of the conversation that now, like, I keep picking apart in my brain. And, uh, okay, well, there's two parts. <laughs> so, I'm gonna say this other part first, since I'm already talking about it, and I'm gonna go back in time. Uh, but, so, I, at one point, I eventually ask her straight out that if I can't trust her to be honest with me and be able to trust her with like me as a person in a relationship I asked her then how could I trust her with my son or our son and her response was I don't know what a great answer for a mom <laughs> not no that does not make me happy uh but so before that though <laughs> before that because I forgot about this part. This is where I got really lost it. 
This is freshly when I came back from walking outside in the streets. She was waiting for me, like, outside. She asked if we could talk about this. I told her no, and I tossed her my ring. And I told her to get out of my face. And then shortly after that, she was like, no, we need to talk about this. And then I proceeded to yell at her, and I said, no. At this point, just looking at you makes me want to slit my throat over you out of spite. That's how I felt. Not a good feeling. Not a feeling I suggest to feel. Definitely not. My dad had committed suicide not three years ago, coming up next month, in a couple days, July 8th, actually. So it's not something that I care to joke about. It's not something I care that... I don't like it when other people joke about it, because it's a very real issue that affects a lot of people. I was there. I was there. I was ready to do it. Uh, thankfully for my family, my sister, my mom, and my brother, I am still here. Um, but so, after all of that, she went to work that morning, and uh, I stayed home with my son, spent time with him, which I always love doing. And then she came back home and she was like, I, I want you gone. She was just like, I want you gone. I was like, oh, well, duh. Um, so at that point, like, I started looking at homeless shelters, like, all this other stuff, contacting my family, like I said, let them know what's going on. Started letting them know, like, the real story behind what's been going on with me and her relationship. And they all suggested that I go to and check into a mental hospital for a little bit. I've always been the kind of person that has felt like... I can't think of a way to put this. The best way I can put it is just to explain how I felt about it. So I felt that they would think I'm crazy for wanting to like that the staff at the mental hospital... I thought the staff at the mental hospital, I would go in to be admitted, and I figured they would literally like be like, you're crazy, you don't belong here, and shoo me away. And I don't know why, but like that was my thought process, which doesn't make sense, because a mental hospital is literally for unstable people to help them get better. And, you know, at this point, like, I'd already contemplated taking my life, like, I don't know, 30, 40, 50, 60 times that morning alone. So, thanks to my sister, honestly, who I love very dearly, she's the one who really talked me into going and really pushed it and really wanted me to seek help, so I did. I checked in. Uh, I was in a ward that was with people that were exactly, like, in my type of position, uh, you know, hitting their darkest days. Uh, I have manic depression, or manic severe depression. Uh, along with suicidal idi idiosyncrasies, or I forgot how they qualified it. Um, but it helped a lot. It helped me get a lot of perspective on things, especially about my relationship with my ex-wife. Uh, like, honestly, like, the biggest eye-opener was this point right here is I let them know the story of everything that happened, like I'm telling you all now. And they were like, well, here's what we can do for you. We're definitely going to get you admitted like we want you to be an inpatient, not outpatient. We would like you to fully check in and something else that we're going to offer you while you're here, since you are married and you do have a kid, we can set you up with couple slash marriage counseling for you and your wife to try and like work through this if you really want to. I was like, hey, I believe in vows. I believe in promises. I believe in agreements. And I stand by them, 100%. I told her till death do us part. Richer or poor, sickness and health, all that good stuff. That's what I told her. And I was going to follow through with it. So I was like, I would like that. I would like if I have a chance for my family to stay together as a whole. Like, you know, my parents were together almost my entire life. And I think it had a great deal. Uh, I totally blanked. I feel like it had a great effect on it. Whoa, shoot. Oh, man, I'm not going to be able to get this set up the way I want it to again, am I? Oh, yeah, I will. God dang it. Okay. It's a little tilted, and I'm sorry. 
Um, but it had a great effect on me growing up, like, in a positive way, them being together. And so I've always felt that if I ever had kids, it'd be someone I'd be 100% comfortable with. I know I'd be in for the long run. We'd be together our entire lives. Or at least that was the hope. And so I then called her uh, while I was checked in, because obviously now we're, like, just separated. I'm in a hospital. She's at home with the baby. And I call her up. I'm like, hey, you know, yada, yada, yada. You know, we're still married. I still do believe in death through us part and, like, all this stuff. I'm going to keep our family together. They have offered us couples and marriage counseling. Like, would, be, would that be something you're interested in? Like, we could actually get help and, like, fix us completely. And she was just like, no. There wasn't hesitation. There wasn't, like ask me again it was just no we're through went back to go tell like my therapist my psychiatrist my counselor because i had all of those while i was there and they all pretty much said the same thing where it's like then she doesn't care about you like i'm they were like i'm sorry to put it in such a blunt way but she doesn't care she doesn't want to be with you you two just need to go separate ways and you need to start figuring out how to live your life without her which is great it's great um I mean, that's not great. Like, it sucked hearing that, honestly. That, like, this person who I made this promise with, till death do you part, has n wants nothing now to do with you, like, whatsoever. Ah, oh, shit, I gotta make this quick. Um, so I went through the inpatient process. Uh, I'm now on antidepressants, and uh, I'm doing better. I mean, I am doing better. If anybody ever has any problems similar to mine, please, suicide is never the answer. It is never what road you should take. I don't care if your family is even against you and like, they don't believe how you feel about not wanting to be alive anymore. You need to get help. And there is help out there. Like, there is help out there. Even if you have to go beyond your family, like I said, and do what I did and check into a hospital, they are made for people like us who are going through these very dark times to help you get better, and I do suggest it. Uh, but that was really the recap, though, of what's been going on. So I'm single now. Um, just figuring out life as I go on. Thank you for watching. See you all next time.